Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Horner, and I'm from Digital, and I'm in fact from Digital Central Engineering. On this tape, I want to share with you a personal view of what I think is happening in the future directions in computing in our industry. I'm going to be using a lot of ideas, and I hope each of you will get at least one idea which will be helpful in your work. As an engineer, my thoughts are usually very visual, and so the technology we're using is visualization, so I hope you'll be able to see what I mean. There are in fact three main themes. The first theme is that there's a transition in the industry. We are becoming more user-oriented. Secondly, the future, in my opinion, is not completely unpredictable. There's a model to help you look into the future. And finally, we should all work harder to put back what I consider to be the missing human dimension into computing. So on this tape, in 20 minutes, a personalized view called The Future Directions in Computing. Firstly, let me introduce the main model, which is in fact used to structure the whole talk. We have found it useful for an enterprise to take four entirely different views, which all must fit together. We begin with a people view, how people do work. Now we have chosen a three-level structure, and that is work at the level of the enterprise as a whole, work at the level of the group, and work at the level of the individual. If we take this three-level structure, then it follows naturally that there are three classes of processes, company processes, group processes, and individual processes. And then beyond that, there are three types of information, company information, group information and individual information, and of course, computing to support all this at three levels. So this is our basic model, which we'll be using throughout the talk. Now in the business world, particularly in the West and in Japan, enterprises have been going through a stage of connecting themselves up with other companies. So that in the same way that in the past, we used to assume everybody had a phone, now it is reasonable to assume that every company has a fax and a computer connection. This makes it possible for new relationships between partners, customers, vendors and the enterprise itself. It is my belief that we now have a new situation, a transition in the industry, and this model will help us understand this. I'm going to now introduce another important but dynamic model. And this time we are concerned with the process of bringing products to market. From studies of technology transfer, it is known that there is a definite four-step process which used to be based on hard technology. An example of hard science and technology is physics or maths. But now, more recently, we need to introduce soft technology such as sociology and psychology. Modern practice uses this notion and involves customers at each stage. What finally comes out is then usable because customers have been involved. The market and technology work together, not just a technology push as it used to be. Now from our observation of this process, the whole process takes about 15 years to bring an idea through the prototype and into the market as a product. We call this the 555 rule, but be careful because automation is changing this rule. Now this model is the one which will help us predict where things are going in the future because we look at people's investments. Today's computer systems, as an example, are based on electrical devices, but we are beginning to see a number of optical devices. Optical cables, optical storage, the invention of compact discs, CD-ROMs, CDI, DVI, and optical storage provides for many possibilities in the future. Before long, we expect to see, beyond optical, crystal-based storage, promised for even periods beyond this, where crystals will help us represent three-dimensional structures, we see the biological model, growing memories and things like that. Now, computer chip technology is mainly silicon-based today. Under development, beyond silicon, we see gallium arsenide chips, which promise more computing power. 
10 years or more away, we will have to have custom built molecules, which will make chips go faster than gallium arsenide. These chips are used in RISC and CISC based computers and coming into use beyond them will be massively parallel processes. Look at the performance levels, the quantum leap promised here. And beyond that, neural networks based on understanding of the human brain. Now for a long time, our computer systems have been based on the notion of time sharing, which has now had its day. And we're entering a period which is called the client server period. Now the old computer room, the old time sharing computer, was based on the notion of how many clients could I put on my computer room computer. The new model is less self-centered and it asks the different question, how many services can I provide my client? This is the simple explanation of the term client server computing. Now this whole process of bringing products to market in the case of digital is based on bringing the latest ideas from science which allow us to bring reliable quality products, innovative products into the market. Let's look now at the four enterprise views. Firstly, computing in an enterprise is now a life support system. Business is beginning to look upon computing as a utility, like electricity and water. If electricity stops, the business stops. If computing goes off, the business stops. An enterprise needs IT to be risk-free. Another requirement of IT systems is that they need to be open and able to use whatever components are available. That is why industry standards are necessary. When you build multi-vendor networks, everything has to be integrated, and this is possible only using open systems principles. Here are some current and near-term IT capabilities. Today, a 10,000 EQ workstation has a keyboard, 2D pictures, and storage for text and numbers. But going forward five years for the same price, there will be voice input, 3D pictures, and storage suitable for pictures, voice, text, and numbers. And beyond that, already in the research labs, we expect holographic display systems and 3D pictures you can actually walk around. This dramatic trend towards visualization can be seen in computer systems which use information from satellites. Visual information is brought down to Earth and enhanced. It can be displayed to any size and in the example shown is being used to update maps to a resolution of just a few meters. Now as a result of this increased use of visualization, computers will be used more and more in simulation. Here we can see an imaginary object being manipulated by actions from the real world. Simulation is a powerful technique applicable to all of us. If you can describe something, it can be simulated. Beyond these simple systems, there are now devices where people wear position-sensitive gloves and a complete computer-generated virtual reality is possible. This is the Ultima in simulation. Now clearly, remote sensing in hazardous environments is a possibility, as is navigation through and control of computer activities. For example, imagine a virtual office existing only in a network of computers. Now people who own downtown real estate may not be too happy with this sort of thing. If we go now to our second or information view of the enterprise, we are beginning to understand that we must have a common view of an element of information. This is about definitions. For example, if steel companies merge with each other and they have a different definition of stainless steel, when they ask their computers for a report on the total steel business, the answer won't actually make any sense. There is a need to have a company dictionary, a common understanding of the meaning of terms. I take the view that we do not have a well-formed concept of information. 
Digital and others have tried to establish a taxonomy of terms because it's only when we agree on what we mean that we can work successfully together. This is possible in limited domains, but not with extremely wide vocabularies. Let's discuss the significance of this in the context of EDI, Electronic Data Interchange. It's obvious that EDI insists that we have a common meaning of terms, a shared dictionary, whether this refers to stainless steel or the weight in tons. Similarly, in the world of OSF, the Open Software Foundation, OSF has the task of defining common rules and interfaces to all the computers to allow the interchange to take place. So there will be successful computing-based transactions. This is obviously a joint exercise and will require the participation of the whole industry, including users. A very useful information model has a four-level hierarchy made up of data, information, knowledge and wisdom. Data is simple with no dimensions. Information has a little structure and we think it has one dimension. Knowledge is information with more structure and is 2D and finally wisdom, universal knowledge or common sense, perhaps has three dimensions required to represent it. It's my claim that the computer industry has evolved from data processing to information and now to knowledge processing. The implied next step seems to require more than enterprise-wide connections. Perhaps we need to link the whole of society beyond enterprises. It's my hope that in the future, in what is called the knowledge age, the revenue streams of future businesses will be regarding knowledge as an asset. And this perhaps will move away from physical goods as the focus, and there will be more of a knowledge-related and service-type economy. In our enterprise model, we can now turn to the view of processes, specifically ones for the whole enterprise and beyond. Some such processes use barcode readers. Such readers rely on an agreed naming system. Barcode systems themselves require a common naming process, but without agreement, the barcode-based systems would be in a state of chaos. We've met this before in our discussion on dictionaries. ELF, Employee Location Finder, is the location process. You have to know where people live and what their names are to get messages to them. Of course, this doesn't always help. Having found your location, you can do useful things like starting an electronic mail process. Electronic mail relies on naming and location. Notes is a product that improves the ability to have conferences. In effect, it allows people to attend conferences but not to be all present at the same time. This uses the computer's memory capability. Let's now deal with the primary or people view in a company. How people have decided to cooperate is an expression of their culture. In the future, with the interconnected world, there are likely to be different forms of relationships between customers, vendors and partners. Different work cultures will arise. If a relationship is a close one and people share common goals and eventually they will have a common culture. This culture is not a legal, fiscal or geographic one. It is work and action oriented according to our original idea. Now this type of culture is supported by the use of common interconnected information systems. Recently, the computing industry has got a lot smarter and recognized that a person, specifically a human brain, has more capability than simple silicon machines. Indeed, their modern view is that people are empowered by machines. A useful model is that information flows into and out of the brain and into a human interface. The computational part is now possible with just a few computer microprocessor chips. Transmission is information systems over space, now the entire globe, and finally data management is information systems over time. Now this is not in any way the usual form of speaking about knowledge systems, but to me this is the key element. 
With a memory, we have the ability to learn and the emergence of intelligence, the ability to direct future actions as a result of past experience and knowledge. The benefit of this is intelligent systems which help us master the growing complexity of the global business world. In support of this globalization trend, Digital is committed to the scientifically based, modern, distributed, client-server model. Typical global clients exist in manufacturing industries, service industries like finance, and of course telecommunications, and this naturally leads us to global networks. Global clients need a variety of systems, a variety of services, and a robustness only available from the client-server model of computing. Now our response to this is NAS. NAS is based on modern architectural principles. NAS is heterogeneous, distributed, portable and interoperable and offers flexibility. All these principles are consistent with the future directions in computing. I'm now going to start drawing some conclusions for an enterprise. If an enterprise takes advantage of innovations, modern knowledge, and educates its people to change its culture a bit, if it uses world-class consultants to identify and improve its basic enterprise processes, if it establishes a company-wide dictionary so that people without misunderstanding can communicate with each other, and if it uses computers in a modern way as the basis for knowledge systems, then in our experience, the enterprise will learn and improve. All of these four actions are necessary. So far, we have been looking from the point of view of people within an enterprise, but new technologies such as mobile personal communications make it possible to communicate from outside, from wherever we are, on the land, on the sea, or even in the air. In effect, we can, if we want to, always be connected, not only with sound, but also with pictures. At work or even on vacation, if absolutely necessary. Now modern cameras take electronic pictures and display them on TV screens. The trend is towards better pictures with higher definition, so that if we want to, we can use the best of displays. High definition television will cater for that. Future displays are unlikely to be in the conventional boxes, but will be large and flat. Along with other forces, new technology is encouraging so much change that most people are undergoing continuous education. Computer-based training systems with interactive visual displays will be essential ingredients of this educational drive. Interactive systems are not passive program watching from boring one-way speeches, but allow interaction. As the saying goes, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, involve me and I will understand. Such systems will of course be using compact disk players for storing images, voice and computer data. In the emerging global computing era, CD players are part of computers and will be linked together with HDTV and the home computer. These machines will be used for music, TV, games and computing as well as education. Supporting you in your electronic house will be microprocessors and antenna. Computing will look after security, heating, power, communications and even venture into the kitchen. Your transportation system will also be increasingly intelligent. Communications, security, weather reporting, parking and even navigation will be supported by computing. And now to conclude, in my opinion, it is reasonable to say that the business world is now largely interconnected. We have the ability to connect to people moving around or at home and to supply them with information systems so they can work wherever they are. If we actually do this next step, we will move towards an interconnected society. Computing seems destined to play a part in this ongoing social evolution. 
and will provide a vehicle for learning because the computer has a memory. It is digital's wish to be part of this ongoing evolution and it's so it is our goal to provide the world's best computing and networking environment using open risk-free systems. This will be done using NAS. In addition, we are changing our company to become more user-oriented. All this is in the mainstream of the future directions in computing.